Good. It's good? All right. Okay, and anyone that would like to approach the board may do so at this time for public comment. Do we have anyone that's wanting to do so this evening? Okay, being none, we'll transition over um, Dr. Shug to some of our discussions in relation to facilities long range presentation. Okay. All right, uh, it is at this time that we are really turning this over to the board for discussion. Uh, I know the board, uh, some members of the board have seen this presentation multiple times. Uh, some members of the board have seen it for the very first time this evening. Uh, and I know it was a lot of information to process. Uh, so we wanted to give you an opportunity to reflect together on any questions or concerns that you might have and what next steps might look like. So I have a couple questions as it relates to, um, I hesitate to lead with this question because it's not necessarily my inclination to go this direction, but uh, I wonder what calculation has been given to A, what if any money we would have to put into Perry to sell it, mm -hmm. and B, in the likelihood that it would be a teardown for anyone who would purchase it, what would we be the anticipated price for Perry and Kish if we didn't keep it as an asset of the district and sold it? I, I don't know if there is someone who is able to respond to that. As far as the sale of the property? Yes. Well, if you were going to tear either of those buildings down, the cost to tear down would probably be, if the district was to do it, would range from three to $600,000. Actually, no, I'm asking if we were to sell it, uh, if we were to no longer retain no, those as assets in the I'm district. I'm not a commercial real estate guy, but if you want my opinion, based on the amount of work that needs to go into them, um, if you were to get them off your rolls and not have to do any of the work that's required to bring them up to code, you'd be miles ahead of the game. Um, I, I would assume that a, a realtor would take them a normal you know, commission on the sale of the building unless it was uh, an intergovernmental agreement to another taxing body. That would be different. Um, there are different methods uh, for doing that, but that's not my purview per se, but um, I would assume you pay a realtor fee uh, or uh, do an intergovernmental agreement with another taxing body. Um, you could sell it for one dollar to, like Kish, you could sell for one dollar to the organization that has it and they just assume all responsibility for it going forward. I, I think you would still be ahead of the game that way uh, by getting it off of your rolls as far as responsibility for maintenance and operations. I want to add something to that. No, I have not taken, not knowing the direction of what we're looking at. I mean, I can speak to experience in uh, prior roles of mine in trying to sell school buildings they, that are in need of repair. It is not an, an easy feat. It is not necessarily something that is um, very costly to, to the district to try to sell. But when you look at replacement value and value of the building, it is not likely that you're going to sell that building for what um, you think or you feel at that time that a building of that size would be worth because there is a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, it has most likely been in situations where they're auctioned or um, as uh, Mr. Larson had um, talked, Mr. Nelson, I apologize, had uh, mentioned that it, it tends to be um, agreements with organizations such as those that are currently leasing Kishwaukee, um, my experience would lend to that those entities usually want to take over that type of option if it's feasible for them. But without um, having the, the board input to know that's a direction they want uh, us to look into, I can do more fact-finding on that. But for today's uh, meeting, I don't have that information. I personally would like to know what we could sell Kish for if, if we decided to offload it and then where could we reallocate those dollars. Mm -hmm. um, that would be obviously a decision we would make um, over time, I understand. And it wouldn't sell in a day and all of those things. But understanding that, you know, we talked about funding sources and offloading an asset, I would think that that could mm -hmm. be a funding source mm -hmm. for the projects we're looking at taking on here. So you're looking for us 
tonight to give you feedback on what exactly? I mean, we gave some of that at the meeting, right, at the last meeting we had in, it's all a blur now, March. <laughs> Is that just a little one? It was March, um, yes. And so you're looking for the same kind of feedback? Is that what you're looking for? Well, I am looking for what the board would like to do in terms of next steps here. You've seen the scenarios, you've heard feedback. Uh, what is it that you think you would like to do in terms of next steps and or what additional information or questions might you have? Uh, so this is really an opportunity for the board to discuss uh, what you've heard, what you've seen, and what you would like to do as next steps. And we have uh, all of these experts here in the room that can answer uh, in much greater depth than I, I would be able to independently uh, questions you might have regarding specifics. I feel. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I feel strongly that the safe vestibules needs to be re addressed as a priority. I know that was one in, the, in some of the enclosures for bathrooms. I, I do agree that those are like the ones and twos. Irregardless of where we go, I think those need to be addressed. I very much feel uncomfortable with a lot of our buildings right now that have the ability for kiddos parents, anybody just to walk in and gain access to all of our students and, and a multitude of our buildings, even some of our newer buildings. So I feel firmly that those need to be prioritized. Um, I also do think that um, some of the other findings as far as I, I also think some of the secondary expansion with our alternative programming is really important. Our graduation rate could improve, and that's really a setting where I firmly believe a lot of our kids have been able to be successful and get the credits they need and have those wraparound services. I also, I personally feel that's a priority. I did have one question for those in the room, and whether it's Dr. Shug or some of the other representatives, kind of some of the projected price differentials in scenario A versus scenario B. Why was it projected that A might be, com could be less in cost than scenario B, I guess? And I, I don't know. That was, because it was like, scenario A was like 98,000 to 118,000. Again, yeah. high level projections versus B was 104 to 125. Uh, the biggest cost is that that option is choosing not to invest in Perry. So uh, scenario B, we're investing in it, we're making those necessary. And that's where the additional, okay. A, A is not. Okay, and that's just where the differential would lie. Okay. Well, I, I, we've got a lot of information to, to, to digest. I know at um, one board meeting there were a couple people, that, one person, a couple people corresponded that they weren't sure we'd done our homework enough before the last meeting. We spent too much time arguing. We should have been better prepared, and so on and so forth. Which is about, I mean, it's it's they're all fair, but I think that. Just that, just for example, today, we received a lot of information today on this stuff. Just received it during the day. I mean, I worked today, but I had to announce another story, but, but I worked all day. So I got this stuff in emails, continue emails today on a lot of stuff that I had all of probably 10 minutes to look at before I came to the meeting. So I think that's that's always an issue and, a, and, and something we need to look at. When we looked at the report, we got the report after the last board meeting. That was 132 pages, or maybe it was even more than that. But it was around it was around 130 some pages. I spent two days going over that report, two full days, not eight hours, but I probably spent 10 or 10 or hours or more going over that report. So it takes a long time to go inf over information like that. I also think we have to take this seriously. I mean, whether you guys know it or not, we spent north of a half a million dollars on this report. That's how much this report costs, well over half a million, all told. So it wasn't cheap. So for us not to take anything seriously for something close to 600 grand, that's, that's probably not a wise, wise either. I also think though that what we hear on, a lot on is that we need to look at the big picture. We need to look at from like the balcony view. Like we're looking at this, we're looking at the big picture now and we'll look at the small picture later. This is stuff I've conversed with Dr. Shug before, so this isn't the first time I brought this up, at least to uh, maybe to her at least. But when we look at stuff like that, we've already named specific things we want to do. We, we throw in early childhood centers, we throw in welcome centers, throw in expanding the clinics, stuff like that, closing Perry, I guess, is one of them too. That if we're really doing this globally, what we do is we look at what are the things we really want to improve. As an example, 
Do we want to improve? And I think one of the speakers brought it up, academic achievement. If academic achievement is something we want to improve, where do we start at? I mean, do we look at our data and see, like I have in the past, that our deficiency to the state starts in like third grade, you know, when we first get the first testing data. And we either <clears throat> decline or stay close to that all the way through 11th grade. So we're starting out below the curve to start with. So that's why I think the early childhood thing was a thing we should have done a long time ago, by the way, because that's obviously, you know, something we need to look at. But when we allocate resources, maybe we need to look at how do we get, what, how the, what are the things we can do to accomplish what we want like that? I mean, maybe it's an early childhood center. Maybe it's having smaller class sizes across the board. Maybe it's getting more, I don't know. I'm just saying I think those are all things we need to study. I mean, I also think we need to look at the money aspect of it. $110 million is almost our total budget for a year. It's, I think we're about 125 now, yes. roughly. When I first came to Belvedere in 2008, our total budget was somewhere in the 80 millions, and we had 9,300 kids. We got about 2, 000, over 2,000 less now, and we're at 125 million. So it's about 40 million more, about 50% more than it was 15 years ago. We got millions of dollars of ESSER money that we never had before that is gonna go away in September. We won't have access to that. We, we won't get any more after the September 2024. So as we move forward and we spend this money, we look at, we, we projected our demographics are flat growth. So when we look at things like impact fees and stuff like that, that in the 2000s, early 19, late 1900s, 1990s and 2000, we're getting a pretty good chunk of money off that. We're, we haven't got that much in impact fees in recent years because there hasn't been that much new development. And from the, at least from the demographics, it doesn't seem like we're probably gonna get that much more new development. So where's that money gonna come from? When we do all these levies, just understand that affects your tax bill. And 70% of my tax bill goes to the schools. And I'm glad to pay that. I, my kids got a benefit of a great education and a lot of other people in this room did too. I'm happy to pay that. But that doesn't mean I think we don't need to be strategic in how we spend it. Because I always think, I think we have more money, I think we have plenty of money I just think we need it is how we prioritize it. And I think that's what we need to pay attention to because you're going to hear a lot of different opinions on how we need to prioritize that money. And I'm not saying my way is the right way or the wrong way. I'm just saying you need to pay attention to how people want to prioritize that money and make a decision on what you think a majority of the community wants to do. Yeah, and, and I was, um, so what would... So your conclusion is, what direction are we providing? I think what we need to do is when we look at stuff, whether it be closing Perry, whether it be adding welcome centers, whether it be adding early childhood centers and stuff like that, what's the main, I, I think too often, we're a solution searching for a problem mm -hmm. when we do stuff around here, in my opinion. What we need to do is, what is the problem we're gonna try and say, I'll use the, I use this example when I, talk to Cassandra about early childhood, is that I'm not saying we shouldn't do more early childhood. I think we waited way too long to do it to start with, in my opinion. We should have done this before. But that's beside the point. That's after the fact now. I think as an example, what we could look at is if we notice that our test scores are not good going into third grade, we need to look at why. And maybe look at second grade and first grade and K, kindergarten. And if we see it's because our kindergartners are not coming in as well prepared as they were years ago when we weren't below the state average by as much as we are now, then maybe that's because we, our kids aren't coming with the skills they did before. Doesn't mean they can't learn as well as they could before. They just might have had those prerequisites like they did before. So what can we do to solve that and fill in that gap if that is identified as the problem? I'm just not convinced we've done any of that stuff yet. That when we look at this, we're starting to, to say we want to do this and we want to do that when we still haven't identified as a strategic plan study. I mean, the two first two ones of the strategic plan is academic achievement and the second one's the learning environment, which I think are extremely important for every kid in school. So how can we solve that and how can we utilize our resources to be able to give the kids that 
District 100, the best opportunity to have the best education. And I just think we need to not rush into anything. We need to take our time when we do it and look at how strategically we spend our money. And some of, like, back to what I was saying about safety, like, there isn't, right, like, to me, there's not going to be an IR measure to that. Like, if our kids are unsafe, like, we can't learn, right? So there, I mean, that, to me, needs to be prioritized regardless. People that are doing active shooting and threatening our school should be coming into our school property. And I don't need a measure for that. Like, to me, that needs to be first and foremost, you know, irregardless. But... I hear what you're saying on the other. I'm just saying that one necessarily doesn't correlate with IR. No, I 100% I, I agree. But, like, I want my child to be safe, and I don't want some random person in the building coming to find them, you know. When we have, when we have problems in schools like we've had, we've had problems in quite a few buildings, and it's, it's not abnormal. That happens in a lot of schools. I've always said that the most important thing to a parent is you want to know your kid's safe and secure at school. Yep. That's number one. That is the most important thing that you know your kid is going to be safe at school. So to me, like, I think that's a direction we need to act on. Like, in any of the, like, to me, that takes priority over anything when I look at a lot of this. Like, and I think sure. tonight's our opportunity to tell our staff what information we need in order to make good choices. So what questions do we have? What information are we looking for so that we can make the best choice for the district? Um, so to, to that end, um, I have a question about Perry's roof. Um, when my family and I moved here late 99, early 2000, it, it's my recollection, and I tried to confirm this today, but, but a roof was put on Perry. And I know none of us were at this table, and I get, I get all of that at the time. And it was a board meeting, and they talked about it being a 50-year roof. Do we have any idea what's causing such accelerated depreciation in the roof? that we're in such need of replacing it? Is there anything there that's a recoverable, like why is it deteriorating so quickly that, it, I'm, not just, I'm not questioning that it is, I, I'm not saying that it isn't, but. We're finally in a 50 year row. Okay, I'll, I'll try to do some more research on that. That's the question I, that's the only question and, I had left about here. Well. Okay. I, I have never heard about 50 year Okay. okay. Um, Okay, so to give further direction, I guess I would say um, I, I totally agree that from the safety perspective, I would have no problem spending every dollar necessary to tighten the security, add whatever sort of security was necessary. Um, I like the bathroom solutions. Um, I like the, I mean, that's just, you know, you're asking for information. I'm yeah. just kind of repeating myself from the last meeting. Um, <clears throat> um, I have a far less energy around um, the need at this time to proceed with um, the Welcome Center. Um, I, I just would have a really hard time in my mind justifying the idea that we would um, create more meeting space and take away learning space from children. Um, that would be a very difficult thing for me. Now, I just, um, as a question or suggestion for evaluation, I don't have any idea about the conditions of these things, but um, especially as it com relates to the clinic, um, you know, we had children learning in mobiles for a very long time, and we didn't want them to do that anymore. And I get that, I understand that. Um, but, you know, is the utilization of mobiles an opportunity for as it relates to the clinic? Do we have an opportunity there to look at a much more pared down way to outsource it so we can expand at? At Everest and utilize existing space that we have in a in a in a reimagined way. Um, as it relates to Perry specifically, um, I don't have energy for closing a school that is performing well. I don't have energy for the idea that it's a message we want to send as a district um, that says where we are most excellently performing among the highest performing schools academically, and in conjunction with that, from a culture perspective, that we would reward that excellence by saying we're going to close your school. Um, I, I, don't, I, I don't believe that's the message we are, I, mean, I don't think anyone's trying to send that message, but I don't see how it could help but be the interpretation of closing a school that is performing with excellence in, in all ways, across all grade levels. And so spending the money necessary to, it, to address the needs at Perry is something I would be perfectly fine with and saying let's find the money and let's take, and, and then secondarily, let's figure out what's happening at Perry that we can 
as we have with other schools. What's working at Meehan that we can globalize across the district? What is working at Perry that is allowing it to be among the highest achieving schools from an academic perspective and from a culture perspective that would, as with Kishwaukee, create a number of people to fill a room tonight and say, you know, we have, we have opinions about that happening and concerns about why it would. Um, so that says something about what's going on there that maybe we need to spend some more time studying what is their recipe for success and what parts of it are duplicatable as it relates to the culture piece. Um, I think the pre-K center is something I would love to see us spend the dollars on. Um, I don't know where we put it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, maybe you know, but um, I, I do think that there is um, going to be an anticipated expansion in need and a greater need exists now. So having the ability to have a pre-K center uh, as part of a mid or, uh, you know, early to mid-stage part of that 10-year plan, I, I certainly don't think that there's a downside to that. Um, and it sounds like being able to expand the programming that's offered at Everest as well as the reach by number or capacity uh, would be great uh, to be able to see as well. Um, and so in, in the order of importance, safety, I, I really want to see us do something about those bathrooms. Find a way to keep a, a, a achieving school and keep it open, spend whatever money is necessary. Um, and then the pre-K center and Everest. I would like some information. <coughs> Well, I didn't come tonight prepared to go through the information well, that we've received before. Yeah, well, we've been provided a lot of you know statistical data over the course of the last couple of years, um, and we can certainly, as a board, go back and pull that information forward. I don't think you're tonight trying to debate whether or not. Perry is performing well, and neither am I, but I'm saying the information we've received as well as the data that's been filed and received over the course of the last several years, it supports the fact that Perry is performing at an optimal level, not, not at a state level. I'm not, not indicating that Perry's, you know, killing it and, you know, making no mistakes there. Um, but I have to wonder what they could do if we invested some dollars in the space in which they do their jobs as well. Okay. Um. But I do want, that is something I would like to see. If, if Perry is doing something that we need to replicate somewhere, if the data shows that, then, then we need to see that. We need to look at that closely, absolutely. Um, and if, if you guys have any information about where you got that data, I'd be interested in seeing that. One, one thing I would like to see is the financials of all this is that we've, we've had more, schools have been flush with more money now than they've ever had. This has been a good time for schools to get money. I mean, we've gotten a lot of ESSER money. Um, the state's given us more money than normal because the state's got more federal money than normal. Cyclically, and time, is, time has showed us, this isn't gonna go on forever. That eventually, we're gonna go the other. I mean, if the economy stayed that high all the time, it'd be wonderful, but over years, that typically doesn't happen. There's always downturns and there's upturns. You always see the bell curve. Sometimes the bell's a little shorter than the others, and but it, but you're still going to see that curve eventually. So as we look down the road, and we may not, we don't have any ESSER money anymore after this year. We don't know what this what's going to look like five years down the road. We still owe on buildings like North and some of the renovations, the BHS and stuff that we finance. We we've done more than once over the years since 2006 or seven. Interest rates are pretty not as favorable now as they were a few years ago, how's that all going to look? Because if we spend $30 million here on whatever, that's $30 million we're not spending on something else. And if we borrow it, just like on your house, that's money you're committing yourself to a long period of time. You're just not committing it for your kids, you're committing it for your kids' kids. If, if they still, and I hope they still want to come to Belvedere and stay around here. But I'm not saying we shouldn't do that, I just think we need to analyze how we can effectively do that and get our best bang for the buck if we decide that's what we want to do. And I think the intent would be, after we give some guidance, we would need to, to that point, bring each individual part forward because that's going to have implications for others and what we can do overall or not do overall, even if we like one of the potential scenarios or don't like one of the potential scenarios, but have to do it piece by piece, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. 
I think that's the way I look at it too. I don't look at, at scenarios. I look at it piece by piece and what's mm -hmm. important to me. Um, number one, secure entryways. Absolutely, safety is number one for me too. Um, early childhood, I don't think that's a surprise for anyone to hear from me. Um, passionate about it. Uh, the sooner we can get these kiddos into a school environment, the more successful they're gonna be. We have a lot of um, problems in kindergarten, first grade, second grade behavior problems that we need to we need to get these kids into school <coughs> earlier and um, you know whatever whatever we do with that it needs to be enhanced um, I like the steps we've made it needs to be bigger mm -hmm. in my book Everest I think Mr. Lascola is he here still oh okay <laughs> well I think he did an amazing job of talking about what that school does for our district um, I know parents that have had kids there and they are so thankful for that environment um, that's huge on my list too the restrooms um, I think those are absolutely important to us and um, I mean equity equity amongst all of our students is very high on my list as well to, to add to what Holly said I think what we've started with EC has been good but I would like to see um, if we had further expansion and an additional site what Dr. Bauman was talking about with like the full day options because I think that is where we see a big struggle. Our pre-K kiddos are successful, they're there for two, two plus hours, and then they go to a full day and it's vastly different. And so if we could, for our most at risk kiddos, have some opportunities for a full day, I do believe that that would be helpful um, in getting them prepared for school, not just academically, but for them to participate in school in a successful fashion. So. I also agree with that as a prioritization. I, I just again think that when we look at this stuff, we still need to look at when we take something here, we need to give up something there. Yep. And that we spent, just as an example, I mean, we spent something like a prorated. This was prorated, so this wasn't the whole thing. We spent a couple hundred grand prorated on Central looking to solve a discipline issue. That, we didn't spend all the 200, it was prorated over a part of a year. But that's money we didn't have to spend on something else then. And I'm not saying it wasn't worth doing that. What I'm saying, though, is we need to continually analyze. If we choose this, yep. then we have to give up this, and we deem this one more important than that. That's what I think we need to do more of. That's what I'd like to see evidence of when we make these decisions. Just that what are we choosing to do instead of this, and why? Yep. So I would prioritize that. Dr. Shug, if you're looking for mm -hmm. some feedback from all board members, uh, safe and secure learning environment. So again, that, that's going to come back to um, the secure entry ways, reinforcing that at all the schools. Um, but also, you know, we talked about the, the price tag on the facilities assessment and identifying quite a few needs throughout the district. Um, and we do need to, to take a look at that. We don't want to get into situations where we're you know, outdated, <laughs> outdated everything from from the HVAC systems to roofs to windows, you, you name it, we, we just got to stay on top of that. To, to it again, it, it provides safe and secure learning environments as well. Um, the Welcome Center, not sure I'm, um, I'm a big fan of that, if you will, uh, from that standpoint. Um, early childhood, I can get on board with that and su support that. I see the, the value in centralizing that. Um, but it does come with a price tag. Mm -hmm. And to, to Matt's point, uh, you know, what are we doing? What are we going to sacrifice mm -hmm. to have that? Now, the, what the point was made earlier today that a majority of our debt will roll off in five years, which increases some more borrowing capacity at the current rate, not necessarily from an interest rate standpoint, from an annual debt service standpoint, if you will. So that should be a wash to afford and pay for some of these some of these facilities, if you will, for new. Um, of course, bathrooms, again, making those secure as well. But again, honing in on, we've, we've identified some needs here in, in, in the district, and a lot of them have to do around safety and just bringing things up to, to code. And, um, but yeah, that would be my feedback at this point. I, I think the other information I'd like to see too is that we, if we do decide to do some of these things, what kind of ripple effect is it gonna have? As an example, as a specific example, Let's say we move and make an early childhood center, okay? We pull out all those kids from Caledonia. What are we gonna to do to utilize Caledonia? 
Caledonia is going to go. I mean, wasn't my, that projected where some of the sections would go in the event that Perry was closed? <laughs> yes. Well, or yeah. No? I mean, there's. I don't think. Yes, in the scenarios that is played out in terms of what some of those pieces would look I, I like just, and how we'd use some of those spaces. I just think so, we need yes. to be honest with people, though. Knowing where Perry's located at, just as a, as a practical point of view, thinking we're going to locate kids at Perry and Caledonia is probably not practical going by a couple schools on the way to Caledonia. I mean, this, the kids are going to come from someplace to Caledonia, but my guess is, realistically, they're not going to come from Perry. I, I think we need to like maintain that high-level sort of aspect of this um, we're not going to have a meeting in May where we vote to, you know, do the early childhood center mm -hmm. and not to do um, Everest and to close or not close right. Perry and to like this. We were asked we today. Are, we were asked today. Yeah, we were asked today to be prepared yeah. for that. Okay, <laughs> just I'm saying Sorry for we are not going I to have a vote in May on all those things. this huge thing that will never be addressed again going forward what our administration needs to know is which options do we have interest in them providing more information mm -hmm. on so that we can keep evaluating this month after month year after year and there will be there will be checkpoints and times where we do have to decide, yes, we're going forward with X, or no, we're not. Yeah. And there is a sequence of events, you know, these things will have to happen in a logical way. Mm -hmm. So some decisions will be made this year. Some decisions will be made next year. Mm -hmm. Some decisions will be revisited the following year because, hey, we've got more money than we thought we would have, or, hey, we have less money than we thought we would have. This is a continuing process, and that was something that I learned being on um, this committee, and it's something I didn't know um, going into the committee, and I didn't quite understand, and it, it is hard to wrap your head around that we're not being asked tonight to commit to anything. We're saying to the administration, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of hearing that people in general don't really like the Welcome Center. Um, okay, yeah. well, if that's kind of the general consensus, then I don't want yeah. Joanne or Cassandra or Sean to spend more time getting us information on the Welcome Center. Now, if people, if I'm misreading that and people are saying, yeah, like, I, I, this sounds interesting to me, this could solve a problem, then we kind of direct them, yes, give us more information on this. If we are, if, if there's sort of a feeling tonight that seven people say, I'm never going to close Perry, then I don't want Cassandra or Joanne to give us more information on whether Perry kids are going to go to Caledonia and what we're going to do. But, like, I don't, they shouldn't spend more time on that. So, what they want from us is an indication as to what we are what we are interested in them providing us with more information about so that we can make and, and they can't provide us with more information about every single thing and they're not asking for input on the 137 page document about the facility you know what what windows need to be repaired at what school they they need to know how to focus their time going forward to get the information to us that we need to make these decisions. So I think Mr. Zickert's right in that this is going to be a long process. Mm -hmm. This is like step one of 500. And some decisions will need to be made sooner than others because we can't tell administration, start looking at a you know early childhood center until we know if we have room to put those kids in our current buildings or not, depending on what we do with Perry. It's, mm -hmm. it's a sequence of events. So we're not voting on option B in May or June or July or August. We're just not. Like, we are saying, yes, these are the pieces that we have the most interest in 
getting more information about, tell us how this will affect student success, tell us how this will affect community participation, tell us how this will serve our students better, but if there are things that are just a no-go, then take it off the table. Well, I guess I would ask about the questions then that I asked at the last meeting about if Perry in the discussion of closing Perry is in the forefront of these for an urgency perspective based upon a number of people, you specifically, Dr. Shug indicating we have to know what we're doing about Perry so that we can know how to think about A, B, C, D, or whatever. I asked a series of questions at the board meeting in March about, and I understand we none of us were at this table in these capacities, about the process in the aftermath of closing Kishwaukee. Is any of that information available? yet is it something we're still looking into getting because I, I I mean those are questions that I I would really like to have answers to how did it go what was the overall experience do we have any data that tells us whether or not we had learning loss we have any indication about what happened in the receiving schools was what was the data from year over year like we're looking at doing it again what was the data? Is there an, an ETI on when any of that information or estimates will be available? I think we can definitely have information <coughs> at the April board meeting. We did do some preliminary uh, <coughs> look at the data. <coughs> I think it will be hard to track that learning loss particular piece uh, at this time, but we have done <coughs> some preliminary look at what the processes were that were in place, how students were placed, those different pieces, and I can definitely spell that out in a document. Um, I think there was an overall sentiment that it didn't feel like it went really well. Uh, and I think there's a lot of pieces that we can learn from that, uh, regardless of what the decision is here for Perry. And we have two board members who lived that. Yes. Um, well, we all so lived we it. Have, I mean, we didn't experience, experience it firsthand, but we all uh, lived it as a community. So, well, I would yes, say. Yes, we did. Um, you have two board members whose children were displaced when Kishwaukee closed, so we do have anecdotal experience. I will say in my anecdotal experience, the um, process leading up to the closing was much worse than how the transition um, was put into place. I don't know if Holly has thoughts on that, but um, my experience was families were treated pretty fairly after the decision was made, the, the real um, sort of trauma and unrest stemmed from how the process took place going into it. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. I would say that's true. I mean, it, it was the beforehand and the transparency issues. Um, yeah, I would be happy to sit down with you anytime, Lisa, and have an in-depth conversation about it. Um, well, I, mean, I think that's something we can discuss at the board level if that's information you feel like we need to have. That's why I asked the questions last time about about that very thing as we face it. Now, and I appreciate that, and if it's more appropriate to have that conversation one on one, then we can do that. But I think you know sharing that more broadly at an in-depth level may help to impact people's thoughts as we think about doing it potentially again. So I would make a declarative statement after Ms. Mayville's education about what it is administration is looking for from us tonight. I, I, I would be a no on closing Perry. So I can just definitively say I would be a no on closing Perry. And I think I've clearly outlined all the other things, so I'm going to give other people an opportunity to speak very specifically, as did Ms. Brenner, as did Ms. Hauk. I thought gave very specific feedback that was pretty in line with what the instructions we got from Ms. Mayville, but for me, closing period would be a no. So if you have no, I don't need to add anything else. I think I've articulated that enough, but for me, period, closing period is a no. I would just like to comment on the process, is that I, I agree with Ms. Mayville, Mrs. Mayville, that this needs to be a long-term look. I, I don't disagree with that. I think it, it, over a period of probably not 10 years, but I mean over a period of years at least, but I also think we need to be able to stick to something like that too. As an example, I'll just throw this out as an example. I've shared this before. I had a teacher email me in January, mid late January, from Perry, who said, We have a meeting with Dr. Shug next week on Monday or Tuesday. And do you know anything about Perry? Do you know anything about whether it's going to close or whatever? And I honestly replied, I absolutely knew absolutely nothing. Zero. I hadn't heard a word, hadn't really talked about it. You know, I'm not saying it hadn't been talked about in the past, 
but in recent times it never been talked about that I saw in that any kind of scenario. A couple of days later, we got the five scenarios that everybody saw today. A couple of days after that, before Dr. Shug met with Perry. Now, I didn't tell that person that I got those, and I still feel conflicted by that, whether I should have said anything or not, but I didn't. I kept quiet on that. Didn't say boo. They had the meeting with Dr. Shug a couple of days after that, and they saw it. They, they saw it anyway. That's the end. That's toward the end of January. We've now looked at April as being a time when we may, may or may not, but the word may in there, at least by the email we got today, may look at making a preliminary decision on that and a final decision a month later. May, the, keep the word may in there. That seems to me to be a process that if we move forward to this other stuff, I'm not comfortable with. I mean, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with doing things that quickly I, I know we need time, I get that part, and I appreciate it if we do have that time, but here's an example of where I'm worried that that time may be less than we all think it's gonna be. Well, and I just, I do wanna just clarify, because I don't know if you saw my response to that email, Mr. Zickert, that- I may not. <laughs> I did on January 19th, before I met with the Perry staff, tell the board what the scenarios right. were, that that was confidential information. So the board knew that I was gonna meet with the Perry staff on January 23rd. And I fully recognize that the board is inundated with information. I The board updates are long. There's lots of information. Um, but I do just wanna say that to me it has been of paramount importance to be transparent, to keep Perry informed. We <clears throat> knew that we were coming up on our uh, facilities master plan design team meeting where a scenario was gonna be shared with Perry being closed. And I wanted to make sure that I was the person sharing that information with them. But I also played out the timeline very carefully to make sure that the board knew that I was gonna be meeting with the Perry staff on January 23rd. So I, I recognize that that was months ago and that there was tons of information shared. Uh, but I do want to say that we really tried to be really thoughtful about that. And I, I certainly um, am sorry if that information uh, got missed somewhere along the line. But I did meet with the staff on January 23rd. I did communicate with the board on January 19th, my intentions to do no, that, so. No, that all happened. I'm not disagreeing with that at all. I, I did see all that. Read everything about it. All I'm saying is, from then to, the, then to November, and I'm sorry, I, I apologize, from then to April is about three months, less than three months. We've gone from first hearing about it to talking about oh, making sure. a preliminary yep. decision to close it. I also think that when we look at some of the stuff that was identified in the facilities plan, and I'm almost still open-minded, and I haven't made up my mind, I'm not gonna lie and advocate one way or the other right now, but I also think <laughs> that some of the stuff that was identified as wrong with Perry we, we either knew or should have known way before we ever got that report. Mm -hmm. I mean, that roof being bad, I don't think it was a new revelation. <coughs> yeah. Some of the fixtures and some of the stuff we talk about there isn't any new revelation. Not being handicap accessible, not a new revelation. Secure entrance there. I've been in there before more times than one. That's not a new revelation. I mean, we knew they didn't have a cafeteria and kitchen and things like that. We've known that for years. That's not stuff that we just learned when we got this report in October. We knew all that stuff before. So all I'm saying is in the process, knowing we knew all that stuff before, to hear about it definitively in the end of January, and then maybe making a decision in April, as, as an example for me, is too quick if we keep that process going with some of these other things too. But I also look, I feel like what's been a common theme tonight is we need to decide what's happening with Perry, period. And until we do that, that's a piece that then we can't make any of these other determinations because there are those financial implications. And for me, in fairness, I look through the teacher and parent lens of people need to know. And so part of us is I don't want to rush into things, but I also feel like it's fair for people to know what's happening with my life next year. Where's my kid going to go? Where am I going to be working? And I don't want to see us if we're not going to act soon enough that people have time to know what's happening in their future either. I think that's super important as well. And I don't disagree with that. I'm just wondering why we didn't talk about it in August, September, October. Well, they why, started why? in October with the work of but the But I, I agree with that. Started. But you, you have to admit, I think all of us would admit, it'd be hard for any of us to rationally say that we didn't know about all those problems with Perry before, before we ever got that report. 
and everyone right. knew about all the problems with Perry. And when they closed Kish, Perry was also on the chopping mm -hmm. block. And we heard, I mean, I was not bored then, but we heard all the same things then. You know, it, mm -hmm. it was, you know, Perry's a 113 year old school then, but it, it was the same stuff. Um, I, we've got obviously a mix of opinions on this. We've got two people who don't need any more information. They're not going to close Perry. We've got one person who needs more time than he's gotten. I'm not um, saying I'm not, I'm not saying I need more time. I did not indicate that. Okay, at all. I misunderstood. I That's okay. This. All I'm saying is I'm saying this isn't the process I would like to see us do moving forward with the other stuff. Okay. That here's an example of the way the process was done that I don't agree with. Okay. I don't agree with how this process went. Knowing we knew all this other stuff, and instead of talking about it a year ago or six months ago, we talked about it two months ago. I don't want to do that process with all this other stuff. That's That was my point. Okay. To, okay. Be, to be clear. Okay. All right. That's fine. Tom, did you want to share something? Um, yeah. Can I go? Yeah. All right. All right. I got lots of questions. Um, just so everyone knows, to go over what Matt said initially, um, this is our first detailed time talking to any of this. This is a lot to unpackage in one meeting. And I would say that detail information has been very, very little that we've had, which we've got some of it just today, mm -hmm. which is, you know, I'm in surgery trying to read on my phone. It's not a good thing. Um, so that's concerning me about the process, so I agree with him on that. Um, we hired a company to do this, it cost a lot of money. I appreciate what they've done, because they did their job and brought us scenarios. Um, I think approaching it from the standpoint that, um, don't think of it in dollars, think of it in the perfect world, is great, but unfortunately as a board member, we have to think of it as, as dollars and cents, because somebody's paying for it. Right? I'm paying for it, the other parents are paying for it. Also, um, I think along the line from when we started to this point, there should have been more detailed conversations so we could get more information on this, because we can't even go over all this today. It's not even possible. Um, and so, so that part I didn't really like. And then we ended up, obviously, with the scenarios that they like were the most expensive scenarios, but they kind of went into it being told, hey, don't, don't think about that. We have to do that. That's our responsibility to the parents and the taxpayers that are out there. Um, the issues at hand, and I'll just go through the ones we want today with what I've learned today and I know, um, I think Everest is a good thing. I think the problem we have to expand it is this health centers that are correct. I mean, yeah. Yes. They came up with their scenario, which is fine. That doesn't mean we have to follow their scenario, right? right? Yep. That's fluid. Absolutely. You know, I, to my mind immediately comes, there's commercial real estate everywhere. A health center can go anywhere. Most places, if you rent for a long term, will build it out for you, right? Why can't we move that anywhere? That solves an average problem, be. and you can do that. And it's probably going to be cheaper than us building a new health center, right? I mean, there's, okay. did we look at all options when it comes to those kinds of things? And I'm not saying they're right or I'm right or anything, but immediately that comes to my mind. It solves a problem. I don't see a negative there. Anyone who's going to a health center, those are our teachers. They can drive. They can do it, right? It's not I mean, just one thought. Um, when it comes to early childhood, I've been a proponent of it from the beginning. I think that's something we need. I think we all, that might be something we all agree. Um, how we get to it and do it, um, not sure. Uh, the big thing as far as I think keeping kids in their local school is a good thing um, and the, the hiring of additional staff if I'm right that you said was the big hurdle to do that and why we needed one location probably isn't going to cost near as much as building a whole other location right I mean what is that dollar amount that's something I would like to know what does that cost what is what does that mean because because when we're talking about millions and millions versus hiring a couple staff to be able to do that I, I'd like to see the cost offset on, on and those we, two. And we did have early childhood in most of the buildings at one time, not all of them, but there but, was. But do you see where I'm, where I'm going? Is, is but not as many sections as we have okay. now. But, but that's a question you have. You're right. Question yeah. I have. Yeah. What's the cost? Yeah. What's the cost? Additional staff, people's kids are going to their mm -hmm. schools or closer home, which I think is a good thing. Um, just a thought on that. And again, these are my 
thoughts today. That doesn't mean they're yep, going to yep. be my thoughts yep. next month. Um, so that was another one. Um, the Kishwaukee option um, versus building a new structure. There was dollars in here. My computer actually is like really slow. I'm not sure what it's doing. Um, versus building a new center versus using Kishwaukee. That's still a savings, correct? What was the debt? Doubt. You doubt it. Yeah, because you're going to have to gut out all those bathrooms up completely. Half of them don't even currently work right now. Okay, but what was the cost of new? 21 million. 21 million? 21 million. Because you, you said the re refurbish of that, if I remember my screen. It's not for early childhood. It's a whole other level of, of interior finish than, than just keep maintaining the facility as being used. You're using different kids' sizes, different mm -hmm. requirements. But I thought we have, we have to go through it anyway, don't we? I, I don't know. That's I'm foggy on that one. Um, it, um, Mr. Butcher, sorry to interrupt, but the, uh, um, if we, when we looked at having early childhood at all the schools, not all the schools have space for that, so it would be additions at all of the schools mm -hmm. to make that space. And well, so that was an expense as well. And again, I don't think we went into it that far right. because it was Not all correct. schools, but the ones who have it to keep it that way versus oh, building see, a whole new center. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right? Yep. Um, okay. Because from what I understand, as she said, it's, it's a staffing issue, but I don't know how much staff that takes. There are a lot of issues. I think staff mm -hmm. collaboration has to be a, a key yeah. thing to think about, too. Some of the changes we're having to make based on the state's requirements are significant. It's not having to change how we teach, the curriculum we use, how we assess. And our biggest challenge right now is being two buildings, getting the whole staff together to be able to do that work and do that PD. We don't have that capacity right now. I'm fearful that if we were spread across six buildings, it would be very hard to work on any of that school improvement work or program improvement work. Because now, when you look at a school, you have maybe one EC classroom in that school based on the size of the school. Because you don't want to plan with. You lose all that networking and collaboration. Yeah. You, you lose the quality of your program because now it's, it wasn't about the quality of the program now. Now it was just about saving money and sending people out. And I, I'm concerned about that. And they operate on different hours, so then what happens is they become like standalone units in the building if there's only like one teacher, because um, they don't operate in the same hours with elementary. That team is already not included in the PLC. They're not part of staff meetings because when they all those kids. meetings happen, we're still in session with kids. So I would really hate to see that team of people isolated like On the other hand, there's no longitudinal collaboration with kindergarten either then. When I eat early childhood is isolated, there's no collaboration with the kindergarten teachers that are going to get them next year. <coughs> or the year that after. Collaboration that's starting, but, it's but not the same. Not any different than you. You're one of our programs, so I, I'm pretty yep. proud of the amount of collaboration that we've been able to get. And we learned at our curriculum <laughs> at services meeting last night that that is coming and it's happening now and it, it will go into effect next school year. But they won't be on site. I mean, it's a fair question, though. That the biggest problem is it's not on site, they're not all there together. Those kindergarten teachers aren't going to be on site. No, it's for the EC to collaborate with one another. Well, I agree with that. But I mean, they won't be able to, there won't be any collaboration longitudinally, though, with the next grade level up. Well, and I think, so I think, again, here's an important point where there's not going to be a perfect solution. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, there's going to be pros and cons to any of these different solutions. We did play out a scenario specifically looking at distributed uh, early childhood that the team did not support. That's why we didn't bring it here. That being said, we could easily bring it to the board so you can take a look at what that might look like and what the costs of that were and compare it to uh, what a new uh, EC center would be. Uh, and we can certainly talk about what it would look like to uh, redo Kishwaukee to meet those needs. But I think overwhelmingly we felt like investing in that Kishwaukee site was going to be very, very costly and not allow us to really do the work that we wanted to do to provide the early childhood center that we'd like to be able to provide for our students and families. I think better would be distributed uh, early childhood than trying to utilize that KISH facility. But, you know, obviously better than that is, a, is an early childhood center. And so back to Matt's original point, right, like if that's what we're going to do, you know, what is, yeah. what's the consequence of that? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what the board has to uh, play out. You're never going to have a perfect solution. 
there's going to be better solutions uh, and worse solutions, and hopefully we can find some sort of common ground. I got a but couple more thank quick you. Things. Yep. Um, Joanne, you said in our, our budget per year, it's, we usually have two or three million dollars that we can put towards these projects. Is that, is that true? So that we put into O and O and That's what you said. Yep. Okay. So, what percentage of say whatever scenario it is is, is would be coming out of our budget and one would not? So well, play play out the financials more is what. Correct. Yep, we can do that. That. Um, then uh, when it comes to well, I don't even know the St. James School thing that someone mentioned. I don't know what. Yeah, we can take a look at that too. That is. Um, but lastly, uh, in regards to, to Perry, I've already said I'm not for um, getting into a school that's performing well as a neighborhood school. And we always say, I mean, when we talk about equity or whatever it is, it's, 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 you know, we have a population there that is lower income that's being served well. I find it hard to believe that sending them off somewhere else is going to serve them better. And I think it's not correct, maybe, to hold the neglect of Perry's condition against them in the long run either. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I just don't. Uh, so that's where I stand with that today on, on those things. Um, but I, I need, I'm a person that likes information to make decisions and I don't feel I've had tons up to this point. Yeah, I think the other thing too is it'd be nice to know how we could utilize some of the buildings that aren't at capacity. For example, I mean, I work at a school sometimes where they have a clinic in the high school. Mm -hmm. Both our high schools are way under are way under capacity. Mm -hmm. One way more than the other. We're having adults go in there. I mean, we're not like they're visiting young children. Mm -hmm. Do we have an opportunity to do something like that? Yeah, that's I don't, I don't know if we do or don't, but I'm just saying as options. And yep, nope, I think that's a great suggestion. Everybody follow up. I'm for the safety entrances mm -hmm. as everyone else. We talked about that for two years on business services. That's something we should be doing. I think everybody's for that. I don't know about the, the bathroom side of it, especially based on age. Mm -hmm. You yeah. really mm -hmm. need that on, at, at some of the age groups, right? Um, not sure, yeah. don't know. And then uh, I don't want us to lose track of, like the problem there, it's a discipline problem as well, right? Yeah. Does that solve the discipline problems? I mean, that's throwing something that makes it maybe less of a problem, but that isn't going to help the problem, right? We still need to address the problem. Was, well, definitely, but it definitely is a problem area, and I think you hit the nail right on the head, Tom, that the priority here really is at the secondary level versus the elementary level, uh, and I think that's definitely where we would target our efforts on that, so yep. absolutely. I think I covered it. Sorry if I took it off. One last thing, and I'll quit, is I think we also ought to look at because I heard a lot of this from the middle school, especially is looking at expanding an Everest type program from the middle school. I mean, I'm not. If, I mean, I'm not saying we free up room there or don't, but I mean, it's just like I said, it's an either or thing. That might be worth it versus something else. But I think it's something to look at that people have at least reached out to me for, saying that yeah, we like Mr. Lascola's presentation. I think he made some compelling arguments. We have, we know we have issues in other buildings lower than that. Maybe look at a model there too. That's a fabulous. Well, speaking of Everest, I'll just piggyback on that as well. Um, would like to see that expanded, but also, you know, we have the, the health clinic in there. Um, you know, it was mentioned here by my, my fellow board members looking at alternative spaces for that. Um, have we looked at, at the, the, the house that was purchased right in front of uh, Belvedere North High School as a potential opportunity there? And maybe maybe we have to expand that house. We need the own the, we own the property. I'm not sure what we use for that. Uh, what we're utilizing that house for, but that could be potential opportunity to maybe move the clinic, maybe expand the house, um, to move the clinic there, and then create the capacity for Everest. Um, I'm going to go back to Kishwaukee. I don't know if I touched base on Kishwaukee. Maybe I didn't, but it just doesn't make, from a dollars and cents standpoint, the deferred maintenance to even bring Great. that place up to, just doesn't make any sense. Great. I would rather us offload it, sell it, get off of it. We have a tenant there now. Perhaps yeah. maybe they would look at buying that from us um, as is and walking away from that from, um, it, it's it would be cost prohibitive if you, if you ask me from that standpoint um, and then you know utilize our time and energy energy and other projects I guess my only question on Kishwaukee would be 
are we making or losing money on it now as it is? I get maybe not putting any more money into I understand that part. But if we're making money on it through the lease now, and we're not going to fix it anyway, and we're going to get almost nothing for it anyway, it doesn't seem like an urgent cause to me. That. But if we're losing money on it now, that's another start. Or if it's and at risk of getting worse and then becomes more, you know, that we're having to put right. into but it. But then right? we could just quit then anyway, because if we don't think we're going to get anything for it anyway, it's like driving an old car. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to put any more money into no. your old car, but that doesn't mean you need to replace it tomorrow. You're going to get as much out of it as you can, as long as you're not losing money. Now, I don't know we are long, As long as the, the property is in a decent condition to be able to offload it, some potential buyer, if right. you will. So you got to maintain some level of <laughs> some quality of a building there to be able to offload it, or else we're just not going to have a buyer, and we're going to end up staying with an empty building there. And, so, and I think important. it's important to keep in mind with Kish is that our students do go to Kish. We have a lot of students in our district who go to High Road School, um, and before we had High Road School there, those kids often had to be bused into the suburbs. Mm -hmm to find a facility that was appropriate for them. So I feel an obligation to either maintain Kish, I keep calling it Kish, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I feel an obligation to maintain it appropriately if we keep it because, I mean, we do have, our district students do attend our, a lot of the students that are from our district. Um, and if we, you know, if we do want to sell, I mean, that's fine too, but I don't think we can keep it and just not do anything to it. It had, it had significant issues when it closed, you know, 11 years ago now. So, um, either way we go on that, it needs, um, I mean, to hear that half the bathrooms are finished work, I mean, there are not very many bathrooms to get. So that's a little concerning. It's not a big of a school. So, um, yeah, I, I'm sort of agnostic on whether we, I, I mean, probably I think the right thing to do is to sell it, um, especially if I want to be interested in purchasing it. I would really, really hate to lose having that there um, for our districts to need mm -hmm. that school. Yeah, great. Um, I would hate to go back to seeing them being bust into the suburbs um, to therapeutic day schools. But I know, and the one thing on that building is that in the one to three year forecast, we would have to invest uh, over $400,000 for replacement for the roof and over $1 million for the HVAC system. Uh, one of their, our, their original for the building appears to be over $100,000. I didn't do anything we'd have to worry about, though. Is that cost, in, is that cost ineffective? Why would they want to continue to do it then? I mean, unless their model's better than ours yeah. and making money on it, which I doubt if it is. They're just going to close it and move their kids to someplace else anyway. They're not going to want to fix it any more than we want to. Right. That was possible. Yeah. I, I don't know that there's a super great financial outcome for what we do with that building. No, I, I would agree. Great. All right. So can I just summarize what I am hearing from the board at this point to make sure that I'm capturing accurately uh, where we're at? So. I am hearing support for the potential uh, next steps with Kishwaukee, potentially selling it, but maybe needing some more information. Uh, I'm hearing lots of support for safe and secure entrances, lots of support for EC, but needing some more information, lots of support for expanding Everest, but looking at some alternatives for what we could do with the clinic other than uh, bringing it over to the district office, and support for bathrooms, but really focusing on that at the secondary versus at the elementary level, which I think is the right choice. I'm hearing not support for Welcome Center, so pull that off. Um, and I'm hearing uncertainty on Perry uh, and what next steps are there. Is that so far an accurate summary of what I'm hearing? It is. I, for me, I personally would like to separate out the Welcome Center from moving the board up to the first level. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, at Central Office, I would like to hear some more information about it okay. that piece because the boardroom is not accessible. It's it's time that we do something about that. So I would like to see, I mean, it's fine if people don't like the Welcome Center idea and if people want to look at other options for the clinic, but I would still like to see some more information about making our boardroom accessible. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and and with respect to Perry, um, we we gotta let these people know yeah. what we're gonna do about Perry one way or the other. It, I mean, Agreed. It, it is not fair. It's not fair to no. the staff or families. And I I hate this for you guys. Eleven years ago, I was sitting right where you guys are looking up at people who didn't know my family and who didn't know my kids and who didn't know my school and who um, who did not know that people that the staff at that school knew my daughter before she ever attended there because um, she was running around chasing her older brother at the fun fair um, when she was two years old and um, who didn't know the staff there and um, who wanted to send my kid to the largest elementary school in the district. Um, and I was really angry and really sad. And um, it, I, I hope you know that your anger and your sadness are completely justified and your fight to keep your kids school open is completely justified and i absolutely respect that and if any of you want to talk to me email me meet with me about perry my door is open anytime and you should fight the good fight for your kids, what's the best for your kids, what's the best for your family. We got some information today about the possibility, and again, it was just a possibility, of a, an initial vote on the closure of Perry in a week and a half, August, or April's board meeting. And then the outline of what would need to follow that with the public meetings and then the possibility of a final vote in May. Um, I guess my question is if whether or not we feel as a board we would be at anywhere close to being able to meet a timeline like that for declaring a decision. I mean, no, obviously we're each going to vote individually and then the collective voice of the board will be what is the, you know, mm -hmm. the decision going forward. But are we at a place where we're going to be able to meet that sort of an timeline or do people feel definitively enough one way or the I mean I don't know I'm not saying people have to declare it but if we need to make a decision and we got to let them know I don't hear I mean again I'm not saying I'm right for saying I don't have energy for closing Perry and I don't see a path to which I could vote to say you know to close it and it's okay that other people aren't being that declarative tonight they need more time they need more time but is April 10 days from now going to be enough time for people to be ready for that to come for a vote, I guess is my next question. Maybe we not. We can't vote on it in April. Stay long. <coughs> yeah. We have the three public Hearings. meetings and we'll be met. Be later. But we'd have to give her direction to have the three public meetings. Correct. Right. I mean, that's, that's, what, she, that's what she's going to want. Uh, yeah, is, so I guess that's, a, sorry if I phrased the question incorrectly. Do we feel that we're even going to be ready to give that direction at the April meeting? We, we have to let this know. I feel I've we have to my, make a determination. It's not fair to families and teachers. Okay, well, if people are going to be prepared to vote, I mean, that's fine. I'm you know, not saying you have to say now how you're going to vote, but, you know, if we're going to be prepared to say the direction we would give going forward as to whether or not to schedule the three meetings with an anticipation of a future vote to close Perry, then it sounds like people are saying, yes, they'd be ready to have that part of the conversation in April. Is that generally true? What do you mean, April? And we wouldn't vote until May. Right. I mean, we could to talk give about that. No, my morning. point was, so you clarified, and I do appreciate that. I, I was not being clear enough. That, are, do we feel as though we're going to be able to vote to give the direction to schedule the three public hearings if that's the oh. route we think we're going to go? I don't think we have to vote on that. I think we just give okay. direction. Okay. So the word in the email today was vote. So I apologize if that's if the semantics of that are incorrect. So, let me rephrase the question. Is that something that we feel we're ready to give direction on as early as April, in 10 days from now? 
I think she's looking for direction tonight as to whether we should schedule public hearings to get community feedback, anticipating that it would be a Mabel. Is that, I mean, we, we have scheduling issues as it is, and getting three public hearings in, we need to get them scheduled if that's what we're going to do. Uh, the earliest we could have a final vote on what we were going to do with Perry would be May, uh, because as you know, you very accurately said, we need to have three public hearings. Uh, we could schedule the public hearings uh, tonight or shortly thereafter to hear further from the public before anything could be made in May. I mean, I think Lisa's question is not a bad one. I think it's a good one to know if the board feels like that's something you want us to go ahead and gather some more information on, and if you think that that's something the board would be prepared to make a decision on one way or the other in May. And in the event we were to schedule those, could those be simultaneous with our current standing board meetings, like a hearing and then a board meeting? Is The it hearing has to stand alone, so we'd have to call <laughs> it to order but and conclude it outside of the actual <coughs> board meeting, but, but we could certainly could schedule it. sequenced like tonight, like Correct. back to back. We could absolutely align, like we do with the budget hearing, we yeah. could align it with a, a regular board meeting date. So I would say, um, I could say now or I could say in April, I'll say it now, I don't feel the need to schedule three public hearings because I would not see uh, a path that I would be I would want to close a vote to close Perry in May. At so this time, I feel the same way. So I don't see a harm with having three hearings to seek additional feedback, hear additional comments from the from the community. Um, it's great that those that spoke tonight spoke. We appreciate the feedback. Appreciate the passion that you provided this evening. But I also want to hear from additional um, community members people that weren't able to be here as well. Give them the opportunity to speak. Um, and then that gives us some more opportunity to think through the decision we're gonna need to make come May or when that needs to be done. Um, I'm, I'm all for getting more additional information, so. I, I think people from both sides of the fence on that, how to reach out to as many people as you possibly can. I mean, I know Ms. Mayville, Mrs. Houck said on the other side, during this when they when they had you know during the few 10 years ago 12 years ago or whatever I was sitting up here back at that time I didn't wasn't really consulted on one way or the other but I was sitting up front not as a board member but as an administrator and I'm telling you those public meetings were brutal they were not fun they were not they were really emotionally draining to say the least on everybody everybody in the room wasn't just, I mean, I think the people having to make the decision were emotionally trained too. Whether everybody thought they were or not, I mean, I, at least maybe I thought they were. That might not be true, but at least I thought some of them were at least. I think when we get to that point, people are not, people are going to think the inevitable is going to happen anyway. So I would just encourage whether we do it or don't, whether we have the three public hearings or not. I would encourage everybody on either side of how you feel on that to contact as many people as you can, board members or decision makers or whatever, and tell them what you think and what your feelings are on it. And have more public tell people what their feelings are on it, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Let their voices be heard, mm -hmm. either way. Okay, I think I am hearing that we want to move forward with scheduling the public hearings. Um, and just one more thing so I can make sure I have clarity. Uh, at April's board meeting, we want more information on financials and financial implications. We want more information on performance data at uh, Perry. We want to take a look at St. James. I don't know how deep a dive we can do on that. It's pretty small. What was that? It's pretty small. It's pretty small. I can, so I can. I think I'll find it there. Is it a viable option? I don't know. It's small. I'll see him on Sunday. <laughs> well, we would I suspect it's small. not, but I don't know that. I mean, yeah, I haven't looked. I it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it's, it's very small. In our center, you have one classroom that used to be in the current. So we looked at about 9, 10 classrooms. We use it for CCD. 
I'm not sure they would they would give it up because they do have their own religious education they're, classes yeah. that they're, they're they're holding in there, and so they would need to scramble to find where they're going to host that. Um, so the likelihood we could ask, well, but the likelihood that the that the St. James Church or the Archdiocese of Rockford would want to let that go. Um, but we could, but we could ask. Their ears are burning tonight. All right, <laughs> I will. I will do some follow up. It's very easy to ask some yeah. questions to see if that's even a viable option that we would want to explore any further. So I can definitely do that. Uh, Kishwaukee process and what happened uh, in Kishwaukee, uh, in the closure of Kishwaukee, and what went well and what did not go well in terms of the transition. Did I? I frequently take notes and then can't read my handwriting, uh, and such is the case this evening. Is there anything I missed? You didn't miss mine, but can I ask one more question? Of course you can. One of the um, members of the audience asked, and I do also have the same that I would like a little more information on, is in the event if we were to have Perry be a closure, I would like some more specifics on where the kiddos go i i do have so i do feel like there's a risk in just letting families pick because i do worry about the implications for what's your trajectory then for middle school and high school so i'd like a little more specific spelled out there and those implications for me um to help in the decision making process as well okay especially if it's going to change other boundaries well right if like, you have I, multiple I just, elementary schools changing boundaries that's even going to be more correct. I, I need a little more of that. Okay, yeah. I can absolutely do that. I want to get people fired up, talk boundary changes. Yeah. We got people fired up already, Mr. Zickert. And a piece of that, I think, is is like the sibling, right? Like, is there, if I am at mm -hmm. Perry and I pick to go to Cal, and then I have a second grader now, when my kinder comes in, do they get to go there too? And are they bus there? And then what middle school do they go to? They, do they go to what was their zone middle school from before? Or do they now feed into Central because they were Cal? Like those kinds of things are okay. my question. And that was a huge problem when Kish closed as far as where they went middle school. And high, high school, school, they had to reverse a decision made. Oof. So okay. that's something so, we need to definitely know. Right, so like okay. I'd like our parents to be informed to say, if I am choosing not Washington, let's say for mm -hmm. example, if that's a normal yeah. near boundary, what are the implications and that they know up front high. that do I get to stay in this path of side of town or do I go to where I geographically preside? Okay, thank you. We can do that for sure. One, um, one last thing. Yeah, too, go is, ahead. Is what we know those 98 kids that live in the Perry don't go to Perry. Yeah. But we really didn't get a definitive answer on why. I had somebody send me a list on what they thought the breakdown was. So it would be interesting to see how accurate that was or not. I mean, reasons like they went to Washington because they had to because of section sizes. They wanted to come back and were told no, things like that. Okay. So in addition to the graph that's in there that says the the reasons, like do a deeper What's the dive. What's reason? Is it bilingual programming? Is it right. handicap accessible concerns? If you can so find that out. It is. I mean, we did do a dive on that, so that chart does give you some of that information. The most students that are leaving Perry are leaving because of not having dual language it's programming there. available. Yeah. That's the majority. A small percentage for special education needs. Um, and then some back and forth with Washington that is really mostly I think a wash in terms Correct. of kids coming in and kids going out. <laughs> um, I mean I think we said there's like 30 plus that chose, I don't remember how many that, that went out, um, that chose Perry and I'm not, I can't recall the number that went out. Uh, but more, in, do you want, why don't you look at that chart and see okay. if you want I, more I information than is in that chart. We said um, it, always, it always brings up the dual language thing on that. We mm -hmm. have dual language in two schools that feed in the north and none in the BHS. Yep. Talking about equity. I, yep. Uh, I think it's I think it's a very valid uh, concern that you raise, Mr. Zickert, and definitely something that's uh, been discussed as a part of our dual language study. Um, okay, so I, I think I've captured. Is there anything I didn't say that you want to make sure I have? And if there is, please, you, you know, please reach out and let me know. Do you want me to work on scheduling those hearings? Do we want to try to spend a little time trying to coordinate those this evening? Could we, we schedule one of them prior to the April 4th meeting since everybody hopefully already has that on their calendar. calendar? I don't have any reason why that would not work could, at this time. Could that happen for May also? Like, could we do that for both months? Because we know those dates are already solidified or no? I would suspect that we would probably want to have I mean, it 
prior to if you're going to vote at that May board meeting, that might be a little. So a then we'd tight. have to call two special board meetings after for the hearings. Yes. Yes, would I think be so. the, I mean, we could do it in May. I just feel like that doesn't feel. I just am wondering as, for calendars, but yeah. Yeah. I'd rather not. I'd rather give okay. people time to process. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Do we, can we just start with the one right now and then yep. what, Pam figure out the others? Or? Yep. So what, what time are you, would you be thinking about I'm thinking we just do it at 530 and if we need a closed session, okay. we do it at the end. Yes. Um, and then if we have to push back the start of the meeting, uh, we do so. I think if we do that at the April board meeting, we might want to consider not doing some of our traditional celebrations yeah. mm -hmm. so that we have maximum time Correct. during the board meeting. So we'll take that off the agenda put that special put the hearing at 5 30 yeah. before the april board meeting knowing that that'll probably yeah. run long and start the board meeting maybe at 6 30 or so or whenever yeah. at yep. the conclusion yeah. okay i mean unless do people want to try to pick another date right now or just start with that way. i mean i just said start with start that, that? Mm -hmm. okay yeah. okay and then i'll have pam start Work the process magic i don't want to change it Keep it, I guess the only other input I would yeah. have is if we're going to do this and have a, a, a I mean we're going to do this so um, have conversations surrounding at these three public meetings I, I would really like to see it highly publicized first thing you see when you land on the page uh, at the district home page first thing you see when you get to Perry's page first thing you see when you get to this district's Facebook page so that we make a very genuine effort to be sure that we can with a good conscience say we did all in our power to give people an opportunity to be heard and speak and that it doesn't in any way appear to be as two board members have indicated you know there was a sense of lack of transparency before and I, I don't want to see us go down that road at all this is you know at all from these even having these discussions but the board wants to do this and we will and I, I think we have to be genuine and, we have to be a, I think it has to be. Lots of, I, I was just gonna say we might want to consider doing one I don't know if we do it on Saturday Perry. or we do it there are people who can't attend they, their Perry schedules Perry just can't Perry attend Perry school. Do a Perry. night meeting it's several families that are still attend yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's a bad idea. Yeah. So, so we could do one on a Saturday yeah. potentially. We could do one at Perry School and then one before the board meeting. I think that's a I think that's a great idea, and it gives everybody the opportunity to to come to Perry and see Perry School and yeah. gives the families a good opportunity. We did communicate out with our families, our Perry families <coughs> directly, so we'll also make sure that we communicate out with our Perry families. Um, and they know those hearing dates as well. And last time we also used the Boone County Shopper, uh, yep. so we'll we'll really try Multiple to get the word out. Would, Translated. Would be, so I know, yes. um, and I'm just throwing this out. I have no idea if this is logistically possible or not. But I know when um, we had um, meetings for parents um, for the dual language program at SAD, we had childcare too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that parents who didn't have child care could um, come and participate without yeah. having to wrangle their toddler or do meeting. Okay, Just I can. Thought. Yep, and that's yeah, not too I difficult agree. to do. We've done that at other times. Yeah. So child care, one at Perry, one on the Saturday, one in the April before. Uh, before the board meeting. And translated documents. Yes, and absolutely yes. everything will be translated. Um, okay, very good. Thank you. I, I appreciate board. I appreciate you gave me really excellent feedback tonight. Um, it gives us what we need to do to take next steps. Does any any of you need anything else at this point from the board? We I feel like we have information to take next steps. Thank you. Thank you. I know that we gave you a lot of information. I appreciate you providing that feedback to us. Okay. All right. At this time, do I have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Pardon. Member Herrera made a motion. Member Mayville seconded the motion to adjourn the meeting. All those in favor, say aye. 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 aye.